Hello again. You've all seen cameras similar to this one in several of my lessons, and I'm going to use it again for this one because it's the perfect choice. This view camera will help demonstrate in the simplest of terms how a camera works, whether it be a film camera, your phone camera, or any digital camera, including video cameras. Knowing what's involved in the photographic process and what's necessary to take a decent photo begins with basic knowledge of the photo taking process. Think of a camera as a mechanical eye because there are a lot of similarities between capturing a photo and seeing things. In fact, I'd like you to try something to show you what I mean. Stare at the screen and close your eyes right now. Keep them closed. When you do open them, do it for just a split second. In other words, just blink once and then keep your eyes closed again. Ready? Blink. Now think of what you just saw. You should have seen an image of an old pickup truck parked beside an old shack. What you just did is basically take a photo with your eyes. The split second they open, they recorded the entire scene perfectly. This is exactly what a camera does, only you can store the image and see it again whenever you want to, in the form of a photo or a digital image. This is what's referred to as a still image. Your eyeball has an opening known as the pupil, which allows light reflected in a scene to enter the eye and pass through the lens. What controls how much light enters the lens is the iris, that's the colored area of your eye, which contracts or expands the size of the pupil. Less light makes the opening get larger or dilate so you can see better in the dark, and more light makes the opening get smaller or constrict so you can see better when it's really bright. After the image enters the eye, it becomes focused by the action of muscles which make the lens thicker or thinner, depending on the distance the image is from your eye. The point at which the image comes into focus is called the focal point. After the image enters the lens, it becomes reversed and upside down as it strikes the back of your eye, which is called the retina. The image impulses then travel through the optic nerve to the brain where it's processed and the image is perceived in its proper orientation. So let's see how this process works in this camera. The camera lens has its own version of an iris in the form of the aperture, which means opening. By adjusting the size of the opening, you can control how much light enters the lens. There are numerical values of relative aperture sizes called f-stops printed on the top of this lens. As I continue to move this control, I am actually changing the f-stop values as well. So let's follow the path of an image as it passes through this camera. The image first enters the lens and then becomes reversed and upside down as it travels a distance through the bellows to where it stops on the focal plane, or in this case, since this is a film camera, the film plane. As you can see here, the image appears upside down and reversed on the film plane. The image is a little out of focus though. That's because it's not being projected at the precise focal point. To fix this, the distance between the lens and the focal plane must be changed, and there's only one point where the image will be in perfect focus. So I'm focusing the image by moving the focal plane frontward or backward with the focusing knob until it comes into crisp focus. So instead of relying on muscles to expand and constrict the lens to make a scene come into focus as in your eye, a camera relies on the changes in the distance from the lens to the focal plane to make this happen. And although the act of focusing is done manually on this camera, it can be done automatically through the use of tiny motors and autofocus cameras, but still the principle remains the same. Because the eyes are always open when we see, we are able to observe things that are moving all the time, just like a movie camera. However, in a still camera like we have here, there has to be something to block light from entering the camera until it's time to take a still photo, just like your eyelids do. That is the purpose of a shutter, which acts like a door. The moment you want to take a photo, you push a button, which opens the shutter long enough for the scene to be caught on film, or photo sensors in the case of digital cameras. Then it slams shut. How long a shutter is open is called the shutter speed. Average shutter speeds are in fractions of a second, like 1 250th of a second. Since the duration of shutter speed affects how long light strikes the film or photo sensor, shutter speed becomes a critical factor in taking a photo. The longer the shutter is open, the more light passes through the lens and vice versa. 
The relationship between aperture settings, or f-stops, which determine how much light enters the camera, and the shutter speed, which determines how long the light enters the camera, affects the overall exposure of light. The correct ratio of lens opening size and duration of time the shutter is open results in a properly exposed photo. This is referred to as proper exposure. There's a third factor which determines proper exposure and that is called film speed or ISO. ISO refers to how sensitive the medium is you're using to capture your photos. ISO is designated by numbers such as ISO 100 or ISO 800. The higher the ISO number, the more light sensitive the medium, whether it be film or digital image sensors. Once you set the ISO number, a light meter inside the camera can compute the correct relationship between aperture and shutter speed to render proper exposure. For more about exposure, see Lesson 10. So this is a lot of information and I'm sure many of you are thinking, gee, all I do is press a button and my shots always come out perfect. So what's with all this proper exposure, f-stops, shutter speeds, and focusing? Well that's a perfectly legitimate question, so let me address it. Since virtually all cameras on smartphones work totally automatically, you don't have to give any of this a second thought. Ditto with digital SLRs too. However, although all you're doing is composing your shots and pressing a button, it's good to know what's going on behind the scenes and how it all works. Why? Because knowledge is power, for one reason. If you ever want to take your photography to a higher level, you'll need to know how to deal with certain situations where shooting automatically simply doesn't work sufficiently for your expectations. There will be times when you can't focus perfectly using autofocus, for example. You'll need to focus manually. And there will be times when you want to have more control over exposure, because auto exposure isn't giving you the results you want. The image is too dark or too light. Times like this are when manual control becomes so important. Well, that's about it. I hope you've learned something new and can appreciate what goes on each time you take a photo, even though you don't see it happen and rarely give it a thought. The magic is always there. Until next time, goodbye. Mm -hmm.